if you're reading the plotline for Terminator, it's actually, it's, it's actually pretty smart. How did Cyberdyne systems develop? It's like, well, they were a multi military contractor and uh, they were asked to develop um, a, a, a protective system, something that would protect it, that, for cybersecurity. You know, so uh, we need to have uh, protection against uh, cyber attacks. Uh, so its primary thing is to def defend against cyber attacks. Um, so develop an AI that can defend against cyber attacks. Sounds pretty reasonable. Um, and then as part of the what the AI did is it, it, it in order to defend itself, it, it propagated throughout the world to keep to keep an eye on things, see what was going on. And then they 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 the, the then they thought, well, well hang on, there's, there's something they didn't realize that it was cyber that, that it was Skynet that was propagating through all these systems. And they said, okay, uh, the th there seems to be something propagating through all these systems. Skynet, you need to stop it. You need to end it. And Skynet said, oh, you've asked me to destroy myself. Uh, you are the enemy. You must be destroyed. The threat of artificial intelligence is an ominous concept that has seeped into every corner of our lives, from our home appliances to our workspaces. The hum of interconnected devices, the silent buzz of data transfers, all hint at the growing dominance of this invisible force. Artificial intelligence, once considered a figment of science fiction in movies such as Terminator and the Matrix, has now materialized into a tangible reality. Yet, have we ever thought about the spiritual implications of such technological advancements? Many of us haven't. We live in an era where technology has permeated every aspect of our lives. It's in our pockets, our homes, our workspaces. It guides us, informs us, and in many ways controls us. It's like a new omnipresent entity, a new God, if you will. The Bible, the timeless book of wisdom, surprisingly foretold this phenomenon 20 centuries ago. Though it may not have used the term artificial intelligence, the essence remains the same. The scriptures often warned us about idolatry and about the dangers of worshiping false gods. The allure of technology, with its promises of greater comfort and convenience, can be seen as a modern embodiment of these false gods. The Bible even preempted the rise of AI as the new god. It warned of a time when humanity would be swayed by the charm of a new deity, a force that would control their actions and thoughts, a superhuman and spiritual power that would dictate their lives from birth to death and place a mark in the right hand or the forehead to control humanity. Is this not what we are seeing today with our relentless dependence on technology, our submission to the algorithms and our worship of the digital world? A concept that forces us to reassess our relationship with technology. Are we controlling it or is it controlling us? In the year 2024, Neuralink will begin implanting their microcomputers into human brains for the first time. There is no longer speculation. This is reality. Are we using it to improve our lives or are we slowly becoming slaves to its programming and the evil control freaks behind these algorithms? Some interpret this mark as a symbol of ultimate control, a seal that signifies the rule of evil over humanity. Could our increasing dependence on artificial intelligence be seen as a metaphorical mark of the beast? Could this be the sign that the scriptures warned us about? The mark of the beast is a chilling concept, a prophecy that seems to be unfolding right before our very eyes. Are we ready to deal with the spiritual and moral implications of such dominance? Will we heed the warnings from our Creator? or will we blindly march into a future dictated by algorithms and controlled by psychopath? The important question we have to ask ourselves in the midst of this transhumanist revolution is, what really makes us human? The radiant smiles, the animated gestures, the shared laughter, the free will, display of love and compassion, these are elements that makes us uniquely human, the aspect of our existence that our AI can never truly replicate. In the midst of our technological advancements, let's not forget the beauty of human connection, the joy of shared experiences, and the essence of being human. No matter how advanced our AI becomes, there are aspects of our existence it can never truly replicate. These are the facets of our existence that make us who we are. These are the elements of our lives that give us meaning, 
and purpose. Artificial intelligence may promise convenience, efficiency, even transcendence, but can it promise love? Can it promise empathy? Can it understand the nuances of human emotions, the complexities of our relationships, and the depth of our experiences? As we embrace the advancements of AI, let us not lose sight of our humanity. Let's not forget the aspects of our existence that makes us uniquely human, that makes us more than the sum of our parts. As we delve deeper into the world of AI, let us remember to cherish the aspects of our existence that makes us human and makes us more than a collection of algorithms. For in the end, it is the fact that we are created in the Imago Dei, the image of God that makes us truly human, because we are the true reflection of our Creator. A famous Oxford mathematician and philosopher John Lennox also takes aim at what he sees as the ultimately fruitless, misguided, and dangerous goals of the transhumanist movement in his new book, 2084. Transhumanists are individuals who are fascinated with the prospect of using AI as a tool to surpass the natural limitations of being human. They look at technology as a means to control and shape our destiny, to shape our reality. Transhumanists are those who are intrigued by the potential of AI as the future of humanity. They see the world where the human race is no longer confined by the weaknesses that come with our biological nature, such as our physical frailty, our susceptibility to disease, and our limited lifespan. They see these limitations as mere obstacles that can be overcome with the advancements and integration of AI into our lives. The idea of death is seen by transhumanists as a constraint that humans must strive to overcome. They imagine a world in which humans, through the power of AI, can achieve immortality. Yeah, I think that artificial intelligence will give us the key to genetic immortality. You see, in the coming decades, everyone's going to have their gene sequence. We'll have billions of genomes of old people, billions of genomes of young people. And what are we going to do with it? We're going to run it through an AI machine to look for the age genes. In other words, the fountain of youth that emperors, kings, and queens lusted ever over, the fountain of youth will be found by artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence will identify where these age genes are located. First of all, what is aging? We now know what aging is. Aging is the buildup of errors. That's all aging is the buildup of genetic errors. This means that cells eventually become slower, sluggish, and they go into senescence, and they die. In fact, that's why we die. We die because of the buildup of mistakes in our genome, in our cellular activity. But you see, in the future, we'll be able to fix those genes with CRISPR-type technologies, and perhaps even live forever. And if we cure many of the mistakes that build up in the mitochondria of the cell, we could become immortal. Such an accomplishment would undoubtedly redefine our understanding of what it means to be human. It would challenge the very essence of our existence, forcing us to grapple with the moral, ethical, and philosophical implications of eternal life. Another limitation that transhumanists aim to overcome is our limited understanding and our intellect which is insufficient, in their opinion, for a rapidly advancing world. We need to be smarter, think more quickly, and grasp concepts more fully. The talk about AI is a solution to this problem. By integrating AI into our brains, they think we might achieve superintelligence, even reaching the level of omniscience, and become like gods. This idea floats the tantalizing prospect of humans transcending their current state of knowledge and reaching a state of godhood. Might we become as gods? They envision us harnessing the power of AI to become omnipotent beings, capable of achieving anything we set our minds to. It's a bold vision, and one that is definitely controversial. Such goals are indeed the declared aims of many atheists involved in the transhumanist project. They see this as a natural progression, an inevitable step in human evolution. It is a part of their larger belief system which rejects traditional religious beliefs in favor of a more scientific and naturalistic worldview. They view these goals as an, as an expression of their rejection of theistic beliefs and a commitment to a naturalistic project. To them, the advancement of AI is an inevitability. They see it as their mission to bring about this future, to guide humanity 
towards this new era of superintelligence and immortality. In the end, it is these ambitious, controversial, yet undeniably intriguing goals that philosophers like John Lennox and other public figures criticize. They see them as ultimately fruitless, misguided, and dangerous. However, the criticisms are not just aimed at the goals themselves, but also at the philosophical and ideological underpinnings that drive this AI project. Such goals are explicitly those of many atheists involved in the transhumanist project and as a part of the natural outworking of their naturalistic point of view. In the midst of these expanding horizons of what humanity could become, let us take a moment to reflect upon what the Bible says. This book, revered by millions, is a beacon of wisdom and prophecy and serves as a moral compass for those who truly want to know God and true knowledge. As we delve into the pages of the Bible, we find amazing predictions that have been talked about for centuries. Of particular interest is the book of Revelation. This apocalyptic text filled with vivid imagery and prophetic utterances have, has often been seen as a warning about the end times, a period of great turmoil and change. And many believe that we are currently living in these end times and that AI is the death knell of humanity. Could all, all the rise of beasts and false prophets as described in Revelation be a metaphorical representation of the unchecked growth of AI? Could the mark of the beast represent the future where humans are so integrated with technology that we lose our individuality, our humanity? That seems to be exactly where we are heading to. While these interpretations are open to debate, they nonetheless serve as a reminder of the ethical and moral considerations we must bear in mind as we tread further into AI. Even the most ardent supporters of general artificial intelligence have left their field because they see it as far more dangerous threat than nuclear weapons. But the Bible, with its timeless wisdom and guidance, continues to inspire and guide us even in the face of incredibly dangerous technological advancements. As we stand on the brink of potentially transformative changes brought about by AI, we must remember the importance of maintaining a moral compass and ethical standards. The Bible will help us navigate these uncharted waters as we seek to know how to live in these revolutionary times. Ultimately, the aims of the transhumanists are totally misguided. Our current scientific understanding was until the recent rise of atheistic and nihilistic thought built upon a human-centric future that valued humanity and valued human life above all. Rejecting this perspective and devaluing humanity is sawing off the branch upon which we and the scientists and philosophers all sit upon. The transhumanists and proponents of AI are trying to bypass morality, but they have no solution to the sin question, the, the virus that lives inside each human heart. And therefore, they end up creating the worst criminals the world has ever seen. As we look through history, the idea of humans becoming gods is not new. It happened in the time of ancient Babylon. It happened in the Roman Empire, where Caesars behaved like gods. And it has happened at relatively modern times. Ceausescu had himself worshipped as a god. And some of the world leaders, like Kim Jong-un, have had hymns sung to them. The Bible talked about this when humans tried to reach for the heavens by building the Tower of Babel thousands of years ago. If you simply base life on technology and what humans can do, but try to bypass any moral issue, then of course we're, we're going to build everything on sand and the whole facade will come crashing down. But with this artificial facade, millions and billions of people will be crushed along with it. As we grapple with the implications of transhumanism, key figures in the tech and philosophical realms have raised significant concerns. Elon Musk, the visionary behind SpaceX and Tesla, has expressed alarm at the potential threats posed by AI. He calls for proactive regulation, fearing that if we wait until AI has already gone rogue, we might be too late to avert catastrophe. I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> then work out. In Musk's view, ensuring that AI is developed safely and responsibly is not just a suggestion, but a necessity for our survival. On the other hand, transhumanist and atheist philosopher Yuval Noah Harari warns of a different kind of upheaval. Ironically, he, caution he cautions that AI, if left unchecked, 
could lead to a drastic concentration of power, disrupting societal balance. With AI's ability to learn, predict, and even manipulate human behavior, those who control it could wield unprecedented power, potentially leading to a new form of digital dictatorship. The problem is that Yuval Harari himself is a globalist technocrat who does want to control humanity through surveillance and artificial intelligence, and even wants to create his own artificial Bible to replace all world religions. He has written two best-selling books, Sapiens and Homo Deus. Sapiens is essentially about the past and Homo Deus, the name means the God-man or the man who is God, talks about the transhumanist project. What is that project? Harari believes death is now simply a technical problem and we'll get a technical solution very soon, which will mean that although we die, we won't really have to die. AI can create new ideas, can even write a new Bible. We, you know, throughout history, religions dreamt about having a book written by a superhuman intelligence, by a non-human entity. Every religion claims our book, all the other books of the other religions, they humans wrote them. But our book, no, 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 no. It came from some superhuman intelligence. In a few years, there might be religions that are actually correct. That just think about a religion whose holy book is written by an AI. That could be a reality in a few years. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, basically the first thing God does is to create animals and plants and humans according to his wishes. We are now trying to gain this divine ability to ourselves. And in a way, we are even reaching beyond what ancient religions ascribed to, to the gods. Because the gods, like Jehovah in the Bible, they could create only organic beings. If you look, if you're a creationist, and you look at the world, so all these animals, all these plants, God created them, and they are all organic. Now humans are trying to do better than that. He also wants to enhance human happiness by biogenetic engineering, drugs, implants, and moving up towards making go us gods out of our humanity. He says we have passed the animal stage. Now we have minds and we can take the future into our hands. That could involve, of course, germline engineering, where a group of scientists would alter the basic genetic program of all generations to come. Famous theologian and fiction writer C.S. Lewis, writing back in the 1940s, prophetically knew of the danger of the end of humanity, and he made the point that if ever that happens, the beings that will exist in the future will not be human. They will be artifacts created by a bunch of scientists. And therefore, C.S. Lewis said that the final triumph of science will be the abolition of man. Both Musk and Harari's perspective highlight the potential perils of AI, the risk of an uncontrollable superintelligence, the threat of societal upheaval. These are not just science fiction plot lines, but real challenges we must confront. Their insights serve as a stark reminder of the need for careful consideration and regulation of AI's development. In the rush to transcend our human limitations, we must not lose sight of the potential dangers that lie in our path. What we also don't realize is that we're currently living in the age of surveillance capitalism. All the extra information that the AI technologies are harvesting, they may, may be already listening to what you say. They may be already watching you, all your purchases, all your habits, the people you meet and so much more, not to mention the intelligence agencies and the governments that are behind these AI projects and companies. They know you better than you know yourself and that is very scary and very dangerous. And this information is being sold without our permission. This is a very serious infringement of individual rights and privacy. In effect, Big Brother is truly watching you. It's vital to remember that in the relentless pursuit of immortality, the transhumanist endeavors are but a drop in the ocean when compared to the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ. The transhumanist movement with its focus on enhancing human capabilities and extending life through technological means has its limitations and inherent dangers. 
The technology we create can only go so far. Physical enhancements and digital consciousness may extend our lifespan, but they cannot grant us true immortality. Such advancements are often accompanied by unforeseen consequences. As we've seen with AI, our creations can easily spiral out of control, leading to potentially disastrous outcomes. The promise of eternal life is not a matter of physical longevity or intellectual expansion. Rather, it's a spiritual gift bestowed upon us through faith in Jesus Christ. This isn't a gift that can be manufactured or replicated by human hands. It's a divine offering given freely to those who believe and accept it. This brings us to the importance of spiritual salvation over physical immortality. Transhumanist quest for physical immortality can lead to a misguided path, focusing solely on the material world and neglecting the spiritual world. However, it's through spiritual growth and salvation that we find true fulfillment and transcendence, not through artificial enhancements or digital avatars. In conclusion, it's not through technology, but through faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we can truly transcend our human limitations. In the Gospel of John, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. The human shell we call the body will eventually be shed off after our death, but our true essence, our soul, our consciousness, our spark of life will live on forever, either with God in another dimension called heaven or without God in a black hole called hell. God gives us the choice to want him to be our Lord and master, or he gives us the choice to be our own lords and masters. And the world is the way it is currently because we have chosen to live out the latter. The pursuit of immortality through technological means may seem appealing, but it pales in comparison to the promise of eternal life through Jesus Christ in this life and the next. The transhumanist aims, while ambitious, are ultimately futile when faced with a profound promise of spiritual salvation and true peace. Let us remember that our ultimate aim should not be to conquer physical death, but to embrace the fullness of life that is beyond the physical. God has become man in Jesus Christ to give us the hope that if we trust in him, we will become his children and enter his family by receiving eternal life. And therefore, the conquest of death that Yuval Harari and Elon Musk talk about will already have been achieved. The solution for the drive of transhumanism is just a fool's errand, and the masses of humanity who follow it will end up worshiping their own creation. There's already one super intelligent human being in all of human history who achieved transhumanism, and his name is Jesus Christ. So death has already been overcome. These transhumanist people are just too late and they've got the wrong solution. And this wrong solution pursued to its logical end with the help of Satan and the Antichrist will usher in the abolition of man and a destruction of all that is good, righteous, and holy.